All right, hi again. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at the connection between Gibbs energy, work, and the standard cell potential. Uh, I think we already know that there is some kind of connection between these, uh, between these concepts. When we look at, um, say, Gibbs energy, we already know that for anything to be spontaneous, uh, we need that to be less than zero. Uh, similarly, we've also seen that batteries are spontaneous only when uh, the standard cell potential is greater than zero. Uh, we can, I think, pretty readily make the assumption, uh, and I don't doesn't need to be an assumption. I can tell you right now that if Gibbs zero is uh, Gibbs energy is above zero, uh, then something is non-spontaneous. And similarly, when the uh, standard cell potential uh, is less than zero. Again, it's non-spontaneous, or if you like, the reverse reaction is spontaneous. Uh, and of course, when either of these are uh, equal to zero, so delta G, uh, or the standard cell potential, then we're at equilibrium, right? And nothing is happening anymore. Your battery is dead, or your reaction is done happening. Um, Okay, so just by virtue of looking at this, we can say that there's some connection uh, where delta G is related to uh, negative E cell potential, uh, negative standard cell potential. All right, uh, so how are we going to connect these things and get rid of that is proportional to sign and turn it into an equal sign? Well, on Gibbs energy, we have joules. Uh, it's energy, of course, and the standard cell potential is a potential, or volts. Uh, to get volts into joules, we need to multiply it by an amount of charge. So this is in coulombs. Uh, okay, so let's just stand that in. Uh, already, and we'll say that delta G is equal to G equal to uh, negative Q, which is the standard I know for heat as well as for um, the uh, the equilibration constant or the reaction constant at anything except for equilibrium. Um, but we're still going to use Q here too. Um, just because that's the standard for charge multiplied by the uh, standard cell potential in volts. Okay, so charge, uh, maybe you'll be lucky enough and we'll have uh, something, well, I traveled in that something, give us the, uh, the charge just to say in the question. Um, other times you won't be so lucky. And then plus, we also want to connect that back to something that we can track in these reactions. Uh, so how exactly do we get this charge? Um, well, we can look at the charge uh, per something that we know is a uh, charged particle that's already participating in all of these uh, redox reactions. So charge per electron. Uh, and this is measured at 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Um, and even though we've only been writing it down as electron, we know that we don't normally deal in just single, uh, single atoms, single electrons, single molecules. So we're more interested in something like the charge uh, per mole of electron which is 96,485 coulombs per mole. And this is what's known as Faraday's constant. Okay? Uh, we'll hear more about that in the next or uh, maybe the one after that, but uh, in an upcoming video, okay? Faraday's constant. Uh, so, and that's usually depicted as an F. It can be a fancy F but uh, I'm not even gonna try that on this layout that we have. So Faraday's constant is uh, charge 
per mole of electrons so that we can then replace the Q uh, and say delta G is going to equal negative Z being the number of moles of electrons multiplied by Faraday's constant, which give us a uh, charge per mole of electrons. So if this is mole of electrons, and this is going to be charge per mole, now we can multiply that by our uh, standard cell potential, and we're done, okay? So that gives us an equation that's going to connect uh, delta G and the work, uh, which I haven't even mentioned, just reminding that delta G is also equal to uh, the maximum work we can get out of a system. So uh, how much electrical work are we going to get out of a battery, for example? Um, we can look at the, the cell potential, how many electrons it's going to push around, multiply it by Faraday's constant, uh, and we can find an answer. And so why don't we try to find an answer? So there's uh, an example on the next page saying lead can displace silver from solution and silver occurs in trace amounts in some ores of lead. Uh, so this is a handy reaction we might want to try uh, to uh, say replace silver that's in solution uh, that we might want to plate out or just get as silver metal and replace it with something cheap like, uh, like lead. Okay, so silver can be a valuable byproduct in the industrial extraction of lead from its ores. Uh, if we want to calculate K, uh, remember the um, K is the equilibration constant uh, and delta G at 298.15 Kelvin for this reaction. And then it, uh, it gives you the half reaction uh, standard reduction potentials for the two halves half time, okay? Uh, so why don't we start out by just writing out the reaction, uh, the two half cells as we see them. So we've got uh, silver two plus is in solution and we're adding two electrons to it to get silver metal. And on the other half, we're going to have lead metal that's going to be dissolved into solution as lead two plus and is going to deliver two electrons. Okay. So if this is dropping off two electrons and that's going to be the anode and the reduction half is the cathode okay so uh, right off the top we can calculate our uh, e cell our standard cell potential because that's still equal to the standard for the cathode minus the standard reduction potential for the anode uh, which is given to us in the question. So that's going to be cathode is silver, so 0 0.8 volts minus negative 0 0.13 volts. And we have 0 0.93 volts on the cell. Okay, so uh, what are we getting at for the question? We want to know, uh, well, let's start with delta G since we've already seen that one. So we have delta G uh, equals negative Z F E cell. So this, uh, this value for the number of moles of uh, electrons, how are we going to find that? So that Z right there. Um, conveniently, I guess, for this example, we have two moles of electrons and we have another two moles of electrons. So that's, that's the amount that's going to be uh, pushed around if we balance this, of course, because that should be just silver plus. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, so we have two moles of electrons on both sides. If we were looking at it as I should have written it in the first place, where we just have silver plus, uh, plus an electron, being reduced to silver metal, uh, we'd have these two values for electrons that might get confusing about which one we want to use. So just remember that if you balance the full reduction 
reaction uh, so that the number of electrons will cancel out in both cases. Uh, that's the amount of electrons that we're interested in. How many moles of electrons have to move from the oxidized material to the reduced material for the balanced reaction to play out? Okay, so in this case, uh, Z is going to be equal to two moles of electrons. So we have negative two moles of electrons times Faraday's constant. 96,485 uh, coulombs per mole uh, multiplied by the standard cell potential. So that's 0 0.93 volts. And we end up with, what do we get per delta G? We have negative 1.8 times 10 to the 5 joules per mole. Uh, okay, so that uh, is negative. We know that this thing was happening spontaneously because it's how it's set up in the question, saying that this is just a byproduct of the um, of the extraction of lead. So something that's happening without putting extra energy into it, uh, and that plays out. So we have a negative delta G. We're extracting some work from the system. Uh, okay. So K, we didn't really talk about that or how we're going to get back to K, but um, let's start with delta G again. So delta G, we know that that relates to K as negative RT long K. Uh, we saw that in thermodynamics and that's still true. Uh, and we also said that it's equal to negative ZF E cell. So what if we want to relate the standard cell potential to the equilib equilibrium constant? Um, so now we can just do a little bit of arithmetic uh, and we end up with the E cell, changing colors on the fly now, uh, is RT over ZF long K. Okay. Um, of course you can also get to K directly um, using the uh, using the value that we got for delta G. Uh, you can calculate K from there, but uh, let's try it this way just for uh, for its own sake. Uh, so if we are going to calculate for long K, this would be, uh, let's just start plugging in some values. So for E cell, we have 0 0.93 volts. That's going to be multiplied by two moles of electrons uh, by Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole. Okay, all that's going to be divided by the gas constant, which is going to be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin uh, by the temperature, which was given to us at 298.15 uh, Kelvin. Okay, so all that, you do the math on that, we get 72 point, uh, looks to me like a four or three in my notes. So K is going to be E to the 72.43 and will be a very high number indeed. So 2.9 uh, times 10 to the 31 which you'll remember is just the, the products over the reactants or telling us how far this reaction is going to go forward, uh, which in this case is going to be all the way. Um, it just means that we're going to have essentially all product and very little reactant left behind, or we're going to be very efficient at extracting the silver out of this, uh, out of this process. Okay, so that's where we'll leave it off there. Uh, if you want to do some more examples of that, go to your, uh, get your book and we'll get some more worked examples going here for you shortly. Uh, other than that, we'll carry on in the next video with um, the effect of concentration. All this so far, we've just seen it at one molar, uh, standard concentrations. We'll find out what happens if we want to change around some of the concentrations next time. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. if we can ever stop this one. All right, and
So long.